for players and fans alike. Few schools can match a game day experience at Ohio State. The pep rally atmosphere of the Skull Session at St. John Arena a few hours before the game, followed by the team walk to Ohio Stadium through some of college football's most passionate and adoring fans. Head coach Urban Meyer addressing every one of his players as they head to their locker room. Here at Ohio Stadium, getting set for the third-ranked Ohio State Buckeyes as they get set to enter the field here in Columbus. One week until their Big Ten football schedule gets underway, and Urban Meyer leads the Buckeyes out onto the field. BTN football is presented by the United States. Today, the third-ranked Ohio State Buckeyes take on Florida A&M here at Ohio Stadium. Hi, everyone. Matt Dad alongside the coach, Glenn Mason. Certainly great to be here in Columbus, Ohio. All right, an update on Braxton Miller, their outstanding quarterback. He will not play here today, but that's all right. If you're an Ohio State Buckeye fan, you have Wisconsin next week coming here to Ohio Stadium, and so you want to get ready for that. Kenny Guyton will get his second career start, and coach, he was outstanding last week at Cal. First start, four touchdowns, three touchdowns in the first three minutes. Gets his second start here today. You know, when I talked to Urban Meyer yesterday, we talked about him and his mechanics and everything, but he wanted to talk about the intangibles that this young man has. He wanted me to meet Kenny Guide. I sat down and talked to him. I couldn't have been more impressed. All right, let's head now to the public address announcer here at Ohio Stadium, Bob Kennedy. Remembrance of Maria and in support of her friends and the entire Tiberi family. Thank you. Fans, joining us on the field today to help present the colors are the servicemen and women of the Ohio Army and Air National Guard. Also joining them on the field is Shane Parson. In 2006, Mr. Parson sustained severe injuries from a roadside bomb while providing care to a wounded soldier in Afghanistan. And now, ladies and gentlemen, conducted by Dr. Russell Mickelson, Director of Bands at The Ohio State University, to honor America. Please rise and join the band in the singing of our national anthem. Coach, let's take a look at the principal financial edge to the game. Well, first of all, just execute offensively for Ohio State. They've got a lot of weapons. It's not about FAMU. It's about the Buckeyes. And on defense, they got to improve their tackling. Everybody point out to, pointed out last week against Cal, 16 missed tackles for 137 hidden yards. They got to take the proper angles, Matt. And when they get there, they got to get their head across the bow. Wrap their arms and drive their legs. 
All right, let's go to the third member of our broadcast team, Lisa Byington. Lisa? Matt, thank you. This is also the return of senior running back Carlos Hyde, who had to serve that three-game suspension. And in talking to Urban Meyer in the pregame, he said, I expect Carlos Hyde to come out like a caged animal. Expect him to get some time as early as the second or third series here in this game. And in terms of splitting time with Jordan Hall for this game, offensive coordinator Tom Herman said, I'm just going to go with the hottest guy. It's been fun to watch him in practice because it's been so deep and so competitive between the two. All right, time for the impact players here on this Saturday. And for the Ohio State Buckeyes, it begins, Coach, with Kenny Guyton. No doubt. Kenny Guyton, the quarterback, getting his second start. He was fabulous last week. They've got complete confidence in this young guy to lead that offense. And Jordan Hall, the running back, who's having a good year, I knew he could run outside effectively. But, boy, have I been impressed the way he runs inside, keeps his shoulders square, and makes people miss. And then Ryan Shazier, you talk about a big-time linebacker. Luke Fickle, the defensive coordinator, told me this guy runs like a cheetah, and he can make plays all over the field. First ever meeting between Florida A&M and Ohio State. The Buckeyes 3-0, 66 degrees. It started raining heavily late last night all the way through the morning. However, the rain has subsided here in Columbus, Ohio. The Ohio State Buckeyes have won 15 consecutive games. That is the longest winning streak in the country. And Earl Holmes is the head coach of Florida A&M. Played at Florida A&M. Also, of course, in the NFL with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And here in the state of Ohio with the Cleveland Browns. Well, Earl Holmes, well, he was at... Florida A&M, they called him the Hitman. <laughs> now, I'll tell you one thing, there's a reason why they call you the Hitman. The Rattlers won the toss and they will receive. Drew Basil to kick off. James Owens is back along with Lamont DeMott Vice. And it is taken at the goal line and stacked up and nailed. At the 11 yard line is James Owens. This is a Florida A&M team that does not have their offensive coordinator and quarterback coach Quinn Gray. He has been hospitalized an undisclosed illness. He is back home recovering which is great news and talking to head coach Earl Holmes. He said that they're certainly hoping that he's going to have a speedy recovery and be back hopefully even next week that has affected this young quarterback the sophomore from Jacksonville Florida Damian Fleming well it's one thing when you lose your offensive coordinator but he's also your quarterback coach that's a tough situation to be in Amari Albert is the running back out of the shotgun they mark it at the 13 yard line delay of game Offense. and a delay of game five yard penalty so tough First down. to simulate this as we talk to their head coach Earl Holmes he had the music cranked up there in Tallahassee Florida trying to get ready for this environment they have only beaten one FBS school and that was Miami back in the late 70s here's a handoff to Albert and Albert is stacked up and brought down John Abosa is there along with Ryan Shazier in a pickup of two you talk about them upsetting Miami, which was the, maybe the biggest win in the history of that school. And Rudy Hubbard, the former Ohio State player and coach, was the head coach there. And he's here today. Back in 1979, 16 to 13. Damian Fleming up top, top of your screen. And coming in is C.J. Barnett with a big stick. And it's time for the... Auto Owners Insurance starting defense and Ryan Shazier, the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week. Last week had 12 tackles, 10 solo tackles. John Bosa, the freshman there, 97 on the edge. Getting the start for Adolphus Washington. Washington is out as that pass is incomplete. Intended for Casey Blinds as Barnett is right there. And coming into punt now for Florida AM, Colby Blanton. 
But Adolphus Washington out last week with a groin strain at Cal. He's out this week. In talking to Urban Meyer, he is probable for next week against the Badgers. Philly Brown is back at the 50. And Ohio State should start out with great field position as this one is blocked. It is blocked and it sails out of bounds at the 28 yard line quite possibly even before that let's see where they decide to mark it as they are going up the line they're going to put it at the 30 as Doran Grant was able to get a piece of it. Well I'm going to just tell you that's a message that Urban Meyer sent to his team all week. We're not going to let them set the tone of this game. We're going to set the tone. We're going to put pedal to the metal and we're going to go and that's why they went after that punt. They went after it and Doran Grant may not have gotten a piece of it. In fact, just his presence and pressure may have caused the punter Blanton to shank it. Here's Guyton. Guyton connecting right down the sideline is Evan Spencer. Spencer had one catch last week. However, he rated out as one of their best wide receivers because of his blocking last week in Berkeley. Well, if you don't block in this offense, you don't play. And quickly to the top of the screen, and it is batted down by Brandon Denmark. Denmark doing an excellent job of getting a hand there. Well, you know, that's the problem. You got to get guys' hands on it. And they triggered, and that's the term that Ohio State wants to use on defense against those quick passes out there. He made a nice play. Guyton at the 10 yard line. Hall is the running back. Guyton sends it to his tight end, Jeff Hireman. Hireman inside the five. John Ajo is there. Ojo comes in, the four year starter, grad student. And they are moving quickly here as Guyton rolls to the near side, looking to the end zone, floats it out there, and it is intercepted by Florida AM and brought out of the ball is loose on the turf. Patrick Aiken with the interception and then it's fumbled and recovered by the Buckeyes. Oh my goodness. Aiken his third interception this year. Well that's a critical mistake by Aiken. He intercepts the ball deep in the end zone and he's dancing around. You got to go down and take possession of the ball there on the 20 yard line. Buckeyes get it back. You hear the whistles blowing. Time out. Florida A&M. They're first. Florida A&M taking a timeout. Earl Holmes cannot be pleased with that turn of events there. Earl Holmes called a timeout because he wanted to challenge a coach's challenge. And so we will take a look as Alex Kempton initially tell us that where the timeout was called but it was a challenge and you see how he lost the ball Patrick Aiken did the ball lost and recovered by the Buckeyes. Yeah you don't know but over the years I've seen that happen and a guy will come out and say hey coach I was down I was down you weren't down. Jordan Hall is the running back. Out of the shotgun. Guyton hands it off. Hall straight up the middle. They have four plays, all of them passing, and Hall comes in and gets his seventh touchdown of the season. That ties him for the NCAA leading rushing touchdowns this season. Boise State last night, a running back with seven as well. Basil comes on for the extra point. Buckeyes on the board. The Buckeyes are the only team of the Big Ten to have scored a touchdown in each of their first drives of their first three games this season, and now. It goes to four. When I was watching film, 
Jordan Hall was really impressive. You know, he's not the biggest guy in the world. 5'9", 191 pounds. Well, guys like that normally can run outside pretty well. But when I watched him run inside, he keeps his shoulders squared so he can make those little subtle cuts right up the middle. And when you talk about the spread offense, you've got to get that inside running game going first. If you get that going, then all of a sudden, the outside stuff, the option stuff goes, and those play-action passes to the inside runs thrown to the perimeter are golden. First 35 games, you see that, and then over the course of the last four, including today, and actually because of the interception, it doesn't count as the first series, the second series, in fact. And that one is out of bounds. Ohio State, you know, one of the things about the Buckeyes coach is they put an emphasis on getting off to a great start, something that they didn't do last season. Kick off out of bounds. Kicking team. By rule, the ball is placed at the 35-yard line. Florida a and ball. First down. However, they made that emphasis coming in to this season and up until this game and they just scored on their second possession 68 to 14 outscoring their opponents that's what you start calling starting fast offensively and defensively get that lead and then keep it Amari Albert the running back Fleming the quarterback out of the shotgun Fleming with time fires to the near side and out of bounds pass intended for Dwayne Harvey this is a Florida A&M team that is one and two last week they lost at Sanford 27 to 20 it's a daunting task for the Rattlers to come in here against one of the best teams in the country is this one is one right back through the middle and Noah Spence on the tackle to Albert and the way this game evolved coaches because originally Ohio State had Vanderbilt on the schedule yeah they had Vanderbilt from the Southeast Conference Vanderbilt changed their mind they didn't want to play the Buckeyes it was late all of a sudden uh, the athletic director Gene Smith had to find somebody had to switch the schedule around got Florida A&M on the schedule. You got to play somebody. He first picked up the phone to call Grambling. And Grambling was unable to work it out as that pass is broken up by Christian Bryant. And that's going to bring up now third down. One of the things that Gene Smith mentioned, you know, you, you look for something to track that's attractive to your audiences here. And he talked about the, the marching 400. Uh, at Florida, the, the world-renowned band, and then you got the Ohio State marching band, the best damn band in the land, they call it. It would have been quite a halftime spectacle, but Florida band is not here. Colby Bryant, his first punt, 15 yards, and that one taken back by Brown inside the 15 and brought out at the 30. Here he is at the 40. Cuts it back inside of Rattler territory across the field at the 42. Philly Brown and shoved out of bounds at the 21 by the punter Colby Blanton flag down During the return, personal foul, Florida A&M. Half the distance to the goal line, Ohio State keeps the ball first down. Now watch Brown. He fields the ball, and then he lets the block set up. You see how he juked inside and went back outside? That's to set the defenders up so these guys can make the blocks, and he's off to the races. the 11-yard line as Philly Brown with a tremendous return, 65 yards. Guyton 
with plenty of time. Fires and lowering the left shoulder is Jeff Hireman, the tight end already with two catches. And Hireman right in to the end zone and a touchdown. Hireman right at the edge. And here's Guyton to Hall. Hall brought back to the 10. As Urban Meyer as Patrick Aiken is there. Trying to mix it up a little bit. Well, they've done that before this year. Right off the bat, first touchdown they scored of the year. They did that. And went for two. And Guyton. Hireman. Hireman reaches over. There's a signal and a touchdown for the Buckeyes. Football on BTN is presented by the United States Marine Corps. The few, the proud, the Marines. And brought to you by Case IH. Be ready with the proven leader. Visit caseih.com slash efficient power. 13-0 after the failed two-point conversion for Ohio State. But the Buckeyes in the first quarter this season outscoring their opponent 81-14. to 14. Red zone today, two for three. And 12 of 13 on the season. They were 10 for 10 heading into this week. Basil to kick it off. Weiss is back along with Owens. And this one taken at the one and bringing it all the way back up as he spins around inside the 30 is James Owens. Let's go back to that formation, the two-point conversion. This isn't the first time they did it, but they put four men out here. They put another four men out here. He can either throw the ball to him, throw the ball to him, or Guy can run right up the middle. And the other option, if it's not there, he can call me back and kick the extra point. They thought they had it. It didn't work. Fleming on a handoff trying to get outside is Omari Albert, the redshirt freshman from Orlando, Florida, and unable to do it as Noah Spence is there along with Ryan Chazier. And Noah Spence has been playing some big time football. He had put him on the edge right there. He turns it back to everybody. I was really impressed a week ago with Noah Spence and Joey Bosa. They couldn't be knocked off their feet. Everybody's trying to cut them. They use their hands. Good athletic ability. Good players. And a whistle is down. Joey Bosa, 97, the true freshman from All Fort Lauderdale. Offense, number 70. Five yard penalty. It remains second down. Third penalty, 20 yards for the Rattlers. If you can't find your game, go to btn.com slash gamefinder right now to see where you can find it. Here from Ohio Stadium in Columbus, third-ranked Ohio State with a lead over Florida A&M, 13 to nothing. Fleming fires, and it's batted down. Great pressure up front. Chase Ferris there. Ferris, a sophomore. What you're seeing more and more in college football is defense alignment because they're so tall that when they rush and they don't come clean, they put those big arms up. Awful hard for that quarterback to throw those intermediate routes with those big hands up there. Third down and long now. It's a defense that when you talk to Urban Meyer and Luke Fickle, the co-defensive coordinator, very concerned about the tackling and all the missed tackles last week at Cal. Fleming under pressure out of the pocket, looking downfield, running out of time. And he finds a receiver on a hookup with Dwayne Harvey, but Harvey stopped by Corey Brown, fifth year senior from Monroeville, Pennsylvania, and a pickup of seven. Well, they gave up contain to Florida AM, but they've got a good enough team speed that they can recover where the quarterback couldn't turn the corner. I saw the coaches go right away. They talked about if the end goes inside, someone's going to come back outside. Basic principles. 
Last return for Philly Brown, 65 yards. Here's Colby Blanton. Blanton, this one is blocked and scooped back up by Blanton as Doran Grant came in and smothered it. And it's collected by the Rattlers. But Ohio State with the block. Well, you see right here, they got the first one. They came, it was a semi four snap. It took the punter to the left. But you have to block the man coming off the corner if the punter's going to walk that way. And the first punt for Colby Blanton was shanked because of the pressure of Grant. Rod Smith is the running back. Kenny Guyton. Last series, an 11 yard strike to Hireman is tight end. This time, fights Hireman once again. Hireman spinning around, and he is brought down at the 70 yard line as Michael Dupree is there to make the stop in an 18 yard hookup. It's interesting in talking to Tom Herman. We're talking about the tight ends here with the Buckeyes, and he said, I have two of them that are going to play on Sundays. Yeah, I have two on Sunday. They're really good, and I'm getting some criticism locally because we're not throwing them the ball. I don't really care about that. Well, he's throwing it to him today. He certainly is. Ironman already with the touchdown. Here's Guyton. Guyton with all the time of the world. Fires to the end zone. What a great catch by Evan Spencer in the back of the end zone. The Buckeyes continue to roll here in the opening quarter. Well, one of my favorite sayings, some guys make plays, some guys don't. Kenny Guyton has proven he makes plays. Good protection. Credit the offensive line. He's got time. A little wheel, wheel route there by the inside receiver. He breaks out. Then back up the field. Perfect pass touchdown. Spencer first this season, second of his career on the eight-yard pass from Kenny Guyton. The Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week getting his second career start as Braxton Miller, who is injured against San Diego State, still waiting for his return more than likely next week against Wisconsin. 20 nothing Buckeyes. Here in the opening quarter 20 nothing Ohio State over Florida A&M. As the clouds start to separate BTN football. Ohio State third ranked Buckeyes against Florida A&M their first ever meeting and turning into a great day for football here in Columbus. Did you recognize that building? Ah, it was the library. I, th I thought you'd let it go. Hey, that's one of my favorite places. I spent many 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 hours in the library. It didn't help much but I was there. Tariq McBurse is back along with Owens and cutting it back up to the near side and out of bounds is Owens. Ron Tanner on the tackle. One of their great special teams players. You look at the last three possessions for the Buckeyes. As you would expect, Coach. Four plays, three touchdowns. That's pretty good. And of course, they've had tremendous field position, something that the Rattlers have. Vice is in the backfield, and another whistle, and flags are down. They're really having trouble. Ball start, offense, yep. number 55, five-yard penalty, still first down. Douglas Almendares. And it's interesting in talking to Earl Holmes. He said one of the things that when he met with his players, and of course, you know, Coach Holmes played at Florida AM, played in the NFL. He said, you know, guys, if you want to play on Sunday, he said, you get an opportunity on Saturday here in Columbus to see where you are as a player because you're going to be looking across at guys that are going to be playing on Sunday. So if you think you have that opportunity, today is the day, at least on an individual level, 
to try to win that individual matchup. I thought that was a great uh, point by Coach Holmes. And he, the other thing he emphasized, I want you to have fun, and I just want you to play FNA Florida A&M football. And no place to go. This is an offense that has struggled mightily as McBurse is brought down. There's an old coach saying, cliche, that you got to control the line of scrimmage on both sides. And when you look at Florida A&M, they've got some skilled athletes, but there's a big difference between the offense and defensive lines of Florida A&M and Ohio State. Big mismatch. Third and eight. Fleming fires underneath, and the pass is caught by McBurse. And it's going to bring up fourth down as Bryant comes in and it makes a stop. Wide receivers coach Ernie Mills has been handling the OC duties over the last three weeks. And there's a great relationship between Damian Fleming and his quarterback coach and offensive coordinator, Quinn Gray. And you can see that not only here today, because you would expect it, but even last week against Sanford and against Tennessee State, they have struggled mightily on offense. Blanton, this one angling, and Philly Brown unable to return it as he runs out of bounds right at the 25 yard line. All right, let's check in with Lisa Byington. Lisa? Man, and watching Braxton Miller on the sideline, he is constantly in and around the quarterbacks there, has the headset on constantly. And when I spoke to head athletic trainer Doug Callen, he told me that he is sore because he had been so active this week, more active than he had been since the injury. And he needed to rest just a little bit. He had to do some cool workouts, some rehab workouts. They think he's about 80 to 85% today. They hope that he can be about 100% next week against Wisconsin the reigning Big Ten Conference player of the year Braxton Miller left knee sprain early in that game on September 7th and a breaking to the outside is Dontre Wilson the true freshman from DeSoto Texas had originally thought about heading to Eugene Oregon to play for the Oregon Ducks and then when Chip Kelly decided to take that Philadelphia Eagles head coaching job, changed his mind, and he's a Buckeye, and they're certainly pleased to have him as Rod Smith now is in the backfield. Second down, Guyton with time, fires to Spencer, and Spencer with a catch in the first down as Devontae Terry Johnson comes in and makes a stop. 70-yard pickup. For the Buckeyes. Let's go back to Dontre Wilson one second. Number one, when I watch film, all of a sudden I get excited when a guy jumps off the screen at you, you know, and all of a sudden you look and you say, Who is that guy? Number one, Dontre Wilson is one of those guys. Unbelievable speed. At the 37 yard line, Guyton with Smith in the backfield. We have yet to see Carlos Hyde. Has been suspended the last three weeks, and the catch is made by Philly Brown for a first down. And a pickup of 18 as Jonathan Pillow comes in, the senior from Jacksonville, Florida. Inside Rattler territory once again. Guyton, his numbers 8 of 10, 92 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. Had a huge game last week at Cal. You can only imagine the day that he's going to put up today against this defense broken up by Johnson intended for Philly Brown. Matt, we talked to Urban Meyer yesterday. One of the things he emphasized to us was the tempo of his yeah. offense. He wants to go faster. I can tell you, yeah, they're going fast today. They're calling the plays as probably as fast as I've ever seen them play. Guyton, the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week, 21 to 32, 276 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions. Also named the Walter Camp Football Foundation Offensive Player of the Week. Guyton looks downfield, and his pass is reeled in and caught by Devin Smith. Five plays, five passes. That one for 11 yards. The auto owner. 
Rangers in turn starting defense for the Rattlers. You see the name Akil Blunt. That is the son of Mel Blunt. Rod Smith and a nice open field tackle made by Patrick Aiken. Akil Blunt from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Of course, you remember his, his father. Yeah, who doesn't remember Mel Blunt? I played golf with him about two years ago in Pittsburgh, and I kept looking at him and said, you're a defensive back? There's no way. <laughs> you talk about a deep, big defensive back. Wow. And, of course, the connection between Pittsburgh and the Steelers and the head coach, Earl Holmes, and also the defensive coordinator, Levon Kirkland, in his first year. Ironman once again. And so the Buckeye faithful certainly happy here as a tight end being featured Jeff Hireman wide open and you know one of the things that Tom Herman told us he said if we go to Hireman then you know it's going to take away from other players as well but certainly want to mix everything up show their different looks and you see that even when they went for that two point conversion an opportunity to try some different things out and provide a different look against this opponent coach. Rod Smith is a running back. Guyton on an option gives it to Smith. Smith is going to be corralled and brought down on that third down and short play. Bobby Jackson and Michael Ducree there. Bobby Jackson from Miami, Florida. And here comes Carlos Hyde. And the reason for the Buckeye fans and their applause, number 34. Urban Meyer emphasized he's back. And he's earned the right to come back. He's done everything they've asked of him. For three weeks, he was the scout team back. He said he had to be the best scout team back in America. He said he's third down on our third on our depth chart, but he's not the third best running back. And the reception once again from the Buckeye fans here is Carlos Hyde. The Run other straight up the middle. The other thing Urban emphasized with Carlos Hyde running tough in there, big yeah. strong guy, is that he's back, but his teammates are happy and excited he's back because they witnessed what he went through to earn the right to get back. He said it's a welcome back. It's not welcome a back. hey, you're back. It's hey, you're welcome back in this room because you went above and beyond. Hyde is the running back. Stays in to block. Provides Guyton some room and what a nice throw as he laid it out there for Devin Smith, who was unable to make the over-the-shoulder grab. He laid it right out there, and Devin Smith unable to reel it in. Yeah, you talk about a big-time receiver with a great speed going over the top. He should be able to catch it. And, you know, Kenny Guyton, watch him here. He steps up into the pocket to buy extra time so they can put the ball in the money. That's part of the quarterback responsibility. Hyde remains in the game. Second down now in 10. Guyton fires to Philly Brown. And it's going to bring up third down as Jonathan Pillow comes in and makes the stop. Matt, Florida and him is a big blitz team coming to this game over 70% blitzes. And what happens, why is the tight end getting the ball today more than blitz last week? Well, because the blitz comes a lot of time. He's the hot receiver. The quarterback's got to get rid of it. Good day for the tight ends. Guyton looking over. Spencer and Hireman, bottom of your screen. Brown and Smith, top of your screen. Carlos Hyde, who ran for 970 yards last season for the Buckeyes is the running back. First down. And a penalty marker is down. Delay of game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. 2.06 remaining here in this first quarter. As fast as they're running plays, it's almost unimaginable they could get a delay of game. Thirteen of fourteen in the red zone. Guyton fires, and the pass is incomplete to Devin Smith. As Darren Parker was there, the true freshman from Miami, Booker T. Washington High School. 
Yeah, there was good coverage there because, you know, Devin Smith has got such great speed, and he's sitting on that route pretty good. Watch for Ohio State to come back with an out and up to Devin Smith trying to get the home run. Underneath to Wilson. The true freshman looking for space, dancing around and down to the 10 yard line as Devin Roberts comes in in a pickup of eight. Dontre Wilson. Well, you see Wilson, they go to him on the fire screen. They're asking this young freshman to do a lot. He plays the slot receiver, he also plays running back. Utilize your talent. Empty backfield. Third down. Guyton with plenty of time to the end zone. And he was looking for Spencer, and he threw behind him. And it's going to bring up fourth down. We'll get a great look at it here. Three-man rush, good protection, nobody in his lane. Ball just a little bit behind him. It looked like Evan Spencer couldn't get his feet set to get his hands on it. Missed fifth, opportunity. Fifth year senior from Houston, Texas, getting his second career start. Starting for Heisman, hopeful Braxton Miller. Florida A&M, their second. Florida A&M with a timeout. Earl Holmes trying to encourage his Rattlers here in Columbus. Buckeyes with 109 remaining here in this first quarter. It is fourth down. Ohio State going for it here. And understandably so. Guyton fires underneath. And Philly Brown unable to work his way into the end zone as Michael Dupree comes in and gets a stop. And it's first down. One might be surprised. You say, well, why didn't Ohio State kick the field goal? But Urban Meyer told us yesterday, hey, fourth down, more often than not, we're going for it when we're in our zone. Twenty-one passes for the Buckeyes. They have had two running plays. Guyton. He can run here if he wants to. Instead, he fires right through Spencer. Hireman was behind him. And a flag is down. Guyton could have walked into the end zone there. Pass interference. Defense, number four. Half the distance of the goal line. Automatic first down. Terry Johnson. I'm sure that Don Herman, the offensive coordinator, will see this same thing right here. Three-man rush. He could have walked up there. They call pass interference, but someplace later, watch for the quarterback draw down the goal line. Carlos Hyde, and there's the pitch. And a touchdown for the Buckeyes. Well, they run the shovel pass down on the goal line, which is really safe because if he drops it, it's not a fumble. It's an incomplete pass. That's a staple. And they really don't have a goal line offense. They just have an Ohio State offense unless you see him go under center, which isn't very often. One yard pass, the 24th touchdown for Carlos Hyde in his career. Second receiving. Basil, the extra point, and it's good. 27 to nothing with 32 seconds remaining here in this first quarter. And from the third best team in the land, you would expect a first quarter like this, Coach. Yeah, I love this place. Just a shovel pass. Again, th what this offense does, it puts that defensive uh, end in such a bind. If he closes, Guyton's going to keep it around the corner. He winds, he's going to just shovel it right back to the back and walk in the end zone. Carlos Hyde must feel good to be in that end zone after sitting on the sidelines for three weeks, suspended by his head coach, Urban Meyer. I'm telling I tell you what he's glad about. He's glad to be off the scout team. That's yes. what he's glad. You see the Chevrolet scoring drive. 16 plays, 75 yards. Second team all Big Ten. Last season, Hyde. Bison Owens back. That's James Owens. 
Basil to kick it off. Owens takes it at the three. Owens pass at 15, pass at 20, 25, and finally wrapped up and brought down at the 30. Evan Bogard there. On the stop for the Buckeyes. BTN goes wherever you want it with BTN to go, presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Watch every game on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. BTN to go is now available to all major subscribers who receive BTN through their cable, satellite, or video providers. To learn more, visit btntogo.com and also available in the App Store and on Google Play. The Rattlers got to find a way to get a first down and keep their defensive team off the field. Get some field position. Weiss in the backfield. Here's Fleming under pressure. Joey Bosa was right there. This pass is picked off and heading down the sideline. Bradley Roby. Roby shoved out of bounds. His first interception of the season, sixth of his career. And the Swanee, Georgia. The junior, a 42-yard return. Well, there's just too much pressure on Damian Fleming, the quarterback. He's just throwing that ball. I don't know if he's trying to throw it out of bounds or no way could he have seen the receiver. If you're going to throw it out of bounds, you got to throw it up to row 10. Great job up front with the pressure by the Buckeyes. 17 seconds. Remaining here in this first quarter. Hyde is the running back. Guyton with time to the end zone. Touchdown, Buckeyes, as Devin Smith reels it in with Patrick Aiken there. And they're separated as Patrick Aiken. A little bit of frustration by the sophomore from Pembroke Pines, Florida, as Smith. Gets his fourth touchdown this season, 14th of his career. Is Guyton good around the goal line? Throw the line? Except with that one interception there. But, you know, when you're going to throw the ball down there, as a coaching staff, you got first and goal wherever you are there. You have to have a lot of confidence in your quarterback to make the right decision, make the right throw. Ohio State put up 52 last week. At Berkeley, they put up 34 here in the first quarter. What number will they get to today? Kenny Guyton with another touchdown to pass. 17 to 23, 144 yards, four touchdowns and an interception. Well, what a great pass. And I mentioned I talked to Kenny Guyton yesterday when I sat down. Urban Meyer wanted me to talk to him. And I'll tell you, what I was impressed with, he looked me square in the eye. He had a big smile on his face. And when I wanted to talk about him being the Big Ten offensive player, like he didn't want to hear anything about it. It came through loud and clear to me as a former coach. It's not about him. It's about the Ohio State Buckeyes. It's about his teammates. And it's about winning football at Ohio State, not Kenny Guyton. High expectations here for Urban Meyer. Perfect 12-0 last year. They've won 15 in a row under his helm. And the sun now shining brightly here in Columbus. Mice and McBurst are back for the Rattlers. After a cloudy morning, a rain-filled morning, and this one taken by McBurst right at the goal line. He'll bring it out, and there's a flag down to McBurst, tackled from behind, and another flag is down here. Typically, when those flags come out, it's always on the return team. During the return, holding return team number six at the distance of the goal line. Florida a and keeps the ball first down. This is last week. Kenny Guyton, his first career start, Coach. Well, yeah, but you know, this isn't the first time he's played. He's come off the bench a number of times for Ohio State in pressure situations a year ago. They have complete confidence in this guy. He knows the offense. He's got unbelievable leadership qualities. The guy's a winner. Fleming fires it up top out on an island in no place to go. As That's the end of the first quarter. Timeout. Ryan Shazier comes in and makes a stop on James Owens. That's the end of the first quarter. It's been all Buckeyes as you would expect here for the 
third ranked Ohio State the Buckeyes at home against Florida A&M in their first ever meeting. Carlos Hyde is back getting a touchdown there. Four nothing as we begin the second quarter. Damian Fleming is the quarterback. Omari Albert, the running back, and stacked up at the 10-yard line as Curtis Grant and Joe Hale are there on the stop for Albert. This is a Florida A&M team that is certainly overmatched. And you look at their total offensive yards, 27 in the first quarter, 150 for the Buckeyes. But you would expect it. And Coach, you, you kind of get into that territory of there's a delicate balance out there. Well, there is. And, you know, Urban Meyer, he's the type of guy, he doesn't want to embarrass another football player, another program. He's got to care, take care of his team first. Damian Fleming under pressure, wrapped up and brought down. And a great job by Chase Ferris as he's able to record the sack. But there's only so much you can do as a coach because you can't tell the players that you're putting on the field to ease up. They got to go hard. There's only one way to play this game, and it's full speed. So all of a sudden you get to a position and starts thinking about it. Some things you do probably more on what kind of plays you're calling in certain situations in the field. Go for it on fourth end. Now you probably punt it. Those type of things. From his end zone, Colby Blanton. And this one bounces out of bounds and Philly Brown unable to collect it. The point I was just trying to make there. Normally punting in that position on the field, Urban Meyer probably would have called a punt block. No, they went with the punt safe, let him get the ball off. They got great field position, but they didn't block it for a touchdown. And you know, as a coach on the other side, and I've been there many times, when a coach takes that approach, you really appreciate it. Today's United States Marine Corps leader of the game, Kenny Guyton. Elected team captain, third most votes, Urban Meyer was telling us. He tells you about the personality and the makeup of the young man. Jordan Hall cuts it back up, spins away from one would-be tackler, and now wrapped up and brought down by the Rattlers. Helms is there, Matthew Caleb Helms. That, that's an excellent point. When you get the third most votes from your teammates to be captain of your football team and you're not the starter, that's almost unheard of. His nickname is Coach. So is mine. And the coach, <laughs> and the coach gave it to him, though. <laughs> Here's Guyton. Guyton fires underneath to his tight end, and that's Nick Van Ness. And Roberts with the tackle and a pickup of 12. Let's send it down to Lisa Byington. Lisa? Matt Urban Meyer certainly has seen the extremes of Kenny Guyton. He likes to tell the story, and Ohio State fans know the story of when he first came in in January, and Urban Meyer kicked him off the team, and then he had to prove to him that he wanted to be back on. Coach Meyer saying that he shed a few tears, and basically the difference in a month, you could see it. In two months, you could even feel it. He wasn't committed to excellence, and now he is just nonstop football. Big wide receivers, top of your screen. Hall is a running back. Guyton on a handoff and an excellent job by the Rattlers. Michael Lovejoy comes right in and stops him. You know, it's Great funny. The, it's funny the turns you take in football. Lisa talked about he's going to be thrown off the team. He shed a few tears and Urban gave him another chance. And if he didn't shed tears, Urban didn't get another chance. Maybe Urban had the tears now because he's an outstanding football player. Guyton connected with Devin Smith for a school record 90 yard touchdown to pass last week on his second throw of the game. This one is deflected and incomplete. Denmark got a piece of it. Let's send it to our BTN studios and Dave Repson. Rever? Big happenings in Iowa City, Matt. Cavante Martin Manley, the first punt return touchdown for the Hawkeyes in five years. They didn't have to wait that long for the second. He just did it again. Two in one game. It's 24 nothing Iowa. Iowa off 
to a great start as well. The Hawkeyes. Guyton. On third and 12. Guyton looks downfield, steps up, fires over the middle, and the pass is intercepted, and there is a flag down as Pillow gets the interception and the pass intended they for might, Chris Fields. Mike called defensive holding him. Holding, defense, yep. number four, 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. Terry Johnson. Well, here you're going to see the slot man going right up the field there. He's guarding him, and they're going to lay the ball up. Oh, he's grabbing him right there. And it's just a step. I don't think Guyton saw the free safety, but that would cause the interception. Handoff. Here's Hall. Hall running toward the end zone. Touchdown, Buckeyes. Well, it was well blocked, and Hall had a stiff arm himself into the end zone. He stiff armed the umpire. And knocked him down. That's a tough place to be for that umpire. It is. And Guyton immediately went over to the umpire to see if he was okay. Here it is right here. Whoa! As the umpire is trying to get out of the way, and he is run over by Jonathan Pillow. And then Guyton immediately, the coach, Coach Guyton immediately went over to the umpire <laughs> to see if he was okay. 40 to nothing. Basil comes on. It's now 41 to nothing and an 18 yard touchdown run for Jordan Hall. All Buckeyes. Everything you expected coming into this game. College football on BTN is brought to you in part by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. The search for Sasquatch is on at Big Ten Stadium throughout the 2013 college football season. Log on to jacklinks.com to see actual footage of Sasquatch roaming around your favorite Big Ten campus. McBurse is back, as is Bice. Basil, the kick off. And this one sent through the end zone over the head of McBurse in some of the best field position for the Rattlers coming up right here. And this is a defense. We talked about the lack of tackling, a concern. And you talked to Urban Meyer about what they do every week. They put the pads on, they hit, they tackle, and he said that was certainly the case on Tuesday of this week, and he really liked what he saw out of his team this past Tuesday. Well, the good thing about it, they missed a lot of tackles in a win against Cal, but that got everybody's attention, and you can go and really coach guys hard when you're coming off a win. Rattlers without a first down. And this pass is collected and caught by Felix. And Felix looks like he may have lost a yard, maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. That fire screen that Florida AM is running, that's the play that Cal hurt Ohio State last week a number of times. And they worked hard on triggering and retracing their steps on that play. Obviously, they did a great job in practice. Ohio State knows how to play that play now. Vice is the running back. Fleming and a handoff to Vice. And Vice, a transfer from Clemson, is stopped by Chris Carter. And there were glowing remarks from the coaches about Chris Carter losing about 60 pounds. Yeah, they, Cleveland, Ohio native. They said this isn't just a big offensive lineman playing defense. This guy can really play as a young guy. He got his weight under control. And now, Urban Meyer said last week he played like 30 plays. He said a year ago he couldn't have walked through 30 plays. He's going to be a force here coming down the road. Said they want to see consistency out of him. Said he was close to being shown the door if he 
didn't commit to it. Under pressure, Fleming fires to the high side. And the pass is caught by Vice, but there is Christian O'Brien right there as the third-ranked Buckeyes. 41 to nothing they lead here. I think that Florida and him would be better suited to run a draw play or just a run play on third and long because on third and long, Ohio State, they're just dialing up a blitz or their defensive linemen are just pinning their ears back and coming, and they just can't handle that type of rush. Fields is back for Ohio State. And he's waving around saying, do not come close to it. As the Ohio State Buckeyes lead 41 to nothing. This October, BTN's award-winning original series is back. It's the show with an unprecedented look inside the Big Ten season. The Journey Big Ten Football 2013, presented by Best Buy, premieres October 9th. Uh, BTN. Guyton. The quarterback, Hyde, Carlos Hyde, in his first game back after three game suspension. The running back, and he lowers his shoulders and runs straight ahead in a pickup of four for Carlos Hyde. This is really important for Carlos Hyde to get some playing time today. He's been on the scout team, but. As we know, Wisconsin's on the schedule next week, and you don't want a rusty running back coming there that hasn't been hit, hasn't had some live work going into that game. Hyde will get it once again, spinning away from Bobby Jackson. Hyde, as I mentioned a year ago, 970 yards rushing, an average of 5.2 per carry 16 rushing touchdowns he had four against Nebraska you could see a little frustration on his part when he spun and he lost his feet he knew if he could have kept his balance a lot more yards Five, three carries for nine yards it's third down now and three empty backfield for Guyton Guyton with all the time he needs now out of the pocket he's going to run for it and Guyton with Denmark closing in and it's going to move the change it's interesting in talking to Urban Meyer about the identity of this team and you look at the offense he said look it continues to evolve he said I want to play really fast but balanced 250 on the ground 250 in the air he said the passing game has been a little bit inconsistent he said this past weekend however at Cal he said everybody graded out high and part of the main reasons the wide receivers big run here by Carlos Hyde before Johnson is able to wrap up and stop him he wanted to get outside on his fourth carry that one for 11 yards well, he wasn't really happy with his blocker on the perimeter. You saw he said something to him. I think he thought the guy, the defensive man, was going to be pinned inside, and that's why he jumped outside. Yes, yeah, so we continued on to talk about the identity. Every great team in any sport, as you well know, every team's got an identity. Who are you? And he said about the defense, he said, it's not what I expect. Here's Hyde once again. Hyde bounces out off of the would be tackler. Wraps him up and brings him down in a pickup of 21 for Carlos Hyde. Well, when we talked about Jordan Hall before, he's 5'9, 191 pounds. Well, Carlos Hyde's a little bigger now. He's six foot, 235. He's got those big legs, and he gives that power run up the middle that they really need. First and ten. Rod Smith is the running back. Off. Here's Smith straight ahead, right up the middle. 
as he grinds it out and gets to the 15 and Akil Blunt son of Mel Blunt comes in from Pittsburgh Pennsylvania the sophomore to make the stop well Florida and him they play a three four defense three down linemen and we're talking to Tom Herman and so much of the high state attack is that power option or blast play as they call it and that's pretty good against defending that power blast but how do you stop the dive up the middle they're having problems fire to Bennett the tight end and right through the fingertips Kenny Guyton got that ball out there in a hurry watch this watch this release he gets it out there right where Urban Meyer wants it right ahead of the receiver so he can catch it and not miss a step going downfield. That would have been a big play. Guyton. With time. Guyton to the end zone. Touchdown, Buckeyes, once again as Chris Fields reels it in. Guyton ties a school record with five passing touchdowns. You know, you talk about everybody rating winning records, all these receivers, because they don't know who's going to get the ball. And Kenny Guyton's not going to predetermine it. Whoever's open, he's going to throw it to. Him. Nine different Buckeye receivers. As Guyton now with five touchdowns five touchdowns and that's what Bobby Hoying did twice John Morton once from Massillon Ohio by the way and here it is out of Houston Texas Kenny Guyton in the record books for the Buckeyes Chris Fields a reception third ranked State Buckeyes lead the Rattlers of Florida A&M 48 to nothing. Owens and Abyss are back for the Rattlers. We talked about the delicate balance. You don't score enough then everybody looks at you and says, well, hey, geez, if you score too much and everybody looks at you like, well, you did a little bit too much there. But they can easily score at will here today. And I think everybody coming in kind of expected that. And remember, you have the defending Big Ten champs in Wisconsin next week. And really the mindset to get ready for next week. And Braxton Miller, that's going to be a key. You know, a Heisman hopeful coming in fifth last year in the voting. Injured against San Diego State early in that first quarter. And you have Guyton. I mean, how many, how many schools out there have somebody that can come in and do what a Kenny Guyton has done? Not many, if any. And obviously, Kenny Guyton is playing terrific. But let's not forget, Braxton Miller is really something special. This team is better with a healthy Braxton Miller. Radler's 19 plays, 24 yards. Miller just an outstanding job. He's only 13 yards away from breaking the all-time record as Etheridge. He's tackled by Roby. Uh, 13 yards away from surpassing Cornelius Green and the all-time rusher for a quarterback here at Ohio State. And we saw Cornelius yesterday. Great to see him. Great to see him. Obviously a tremendous football player but even a better person. And, you know, it's fun being around guys like that. He just lights up the room when he walks in, doesn't it? I mean, it's just... Omari Albert no longer in the backfield. It's Lamont Vice and Vice trying to get outside the transfer from Clemson. Corny Green's got that big smile on his face, and, you know, you just talk to him. You can't help but feel better about yourself and then you start reflecting back to those good old days when he was playing back in 73 that championship team is here today a lot of his teammates are here it's a special time certainly is first first down for the Rattlers and of course the tiebreaker that 1973 team undefeated team the last undefeated the fifth and final undefeated team for Woody Hayes your former head coach and of course you worked for him and 
Uh, BTN as Bice runs the ball off tackle and is stopped by Christian O'Brien. They have a documentary coming out called Tiebreaker. It examines the memorable 1973 Ohio State of Michigan 10-10 tie, the controversy that followed that would change college football forever. Well, at least change the Big Ten forever. Let's, you know, let's face it, uh, what a great game that was. It seems like yesterday. I can't believe it was that long ago. Second down and long. Second and eight. To the near side of the pass is caught by McBurst. McBurst, the transfer from Purdue. As Tyvis Powell comes in, redshirt freshman from Bedford, Ohio, and Corey Brown are there. And tiebreaker coming this season. What happens when college football's most storied rivalry isn't decided on the field? Don't miss tiebreaker. BTN original coming later this fall. Bo didn't look too happy there on the sideline, did he? Huh? No, he his hat down like that. No, he did not. Third down now for the Rattlers. And, of course, that was in between your playing days here at Ohio State and when you returned as an assistant coach. I think it was 73-year at Allegheny College. Or was it Ball State at that I time? Allegheny All right, guys, College. Uh, the old Gators up there. But, hey, it's here we are. It's 1973. High State's undefeated. They're playing up at Michigan. A high State dominates the first half. They go in at halftime, 10 nothing. Then Michigan comes back the second half, totally dominates it. 209 yards to 91 yards for the Buckeyes. And Mike Lantry tries a 58-yard field goal, and it misses. High State gets the ball back. Greg Herring playing quarterback. He throws an interception. That gives Michigan another chance. Lee Blanton back to Chris Fields. Fields takes it at the seven. Fields looking for a seam, and he is stopped right at the 15-yard line by George Maxey coming in. And of course, 1973, Coach. Hey, watch it. Here come and this rivalry's not intense enough. Here come the Buckeyes, and they're going to tear down the glow, the gold blue banner. Can you believe that? At the big house. Yeah. So now all of a sudden, here comes Bo and his guys. They come out. They say, "Where's the banner?" Where is it? They don't know what to do. Bo gets the, hey, we got to go touch our banner. But like I said, here it is. Lantry misses the 58-yard field goal. Gray Hare comes in. He's the passing quarterback. He throws an interception. That gives Michigan another chance. They drive the ball. They try a field goal from the 45-yard 45 45-yard field goal and miss. 10-10 tie. Hand off to Rod Smith. Rod Smith with room. Pass the 30. 35. And finally tackle the by Bobby Jackson at the 40-yard line. And John Ojo also there. 26-yard game. Let me finish up about that 73 game. We get a little excited. So anyway, now it's going to go to an athletic director vote. Dennis Franklin, the Michigan quarterback, broke his collarbone in the game. I guess the ADs thought that that would give Ohio State a better chance to win in the Rose Bowl. They voted Ohio State. Ohio State went to the Rose Bowl, beat Southern Cal. The rest is history. Yes. And if you're Ohio State, you love the history. And if you're Michigan, you don't. No, well... You know, I brought a change around the big change about in the Big Ten that was needed. Before that, you could only go to the Rose Bowl. You couldn't go two years in a row. And all of a sudden, Michigan had those great teams and, like, for four years, never went to a bowl game. All changed. Now with 2.06 remaining here in the first half, the band getting ready as they take their spot along the perimeter of the field here at Ohio Stadium. It is 48 to nothing. Guyton. With time, fires to the near side, and the pass is complete to Devin Smith. Of course, Devin Smith with that 90-yard touchdown play for an Ohio State record back in 1979, an 86-yard catch, Cal Murray. That's the record that he broke. Yeah, he broke the record. 86-yard touchdown pass, Leister to Cal Murray. Let me just tell you something. It was a four-yard dump off a play-action pass, and Cal Murray ran the other 82. Big-time play. Guyton on a handoff, Rod Smith. Cuts to the outside, Smith now back, cuts into the inside and down at the 35-yard line. Who called that play? Well, I called that play. I was there, and I taught Cal Murray how to 
catch that ball and make a move and go the distance and the you think, uh, well you thought it would be about what uh, you're hoping for what five five six eight yards <laughs> you know, every once in a while you luck out hey you see uh, that run that last run there by Rod Smith let me just tell you something all that dancing that might work against Florida and m I guarantee Terry Meyer will be saying hey you get going north and south Guyton has connected with nine different receivers that one intended for fields Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report with Dave Refson, the coach, Ed Howard, and of course, we'll have highlights from around the Big Ten. The Gophers trying to go 4 0 in an afternoon preview. Uh, what's coming up later tonight, of course, Missouri and Indiana. Ezekiel Elliott in the backfield, the true freshman from St. Louis, Missouri. Guyton. Underneath to Wilson, and that play going nowhere for the Buckeyes as William Smalls comes in. Matt, you keep calling off the names of running backs getting in this backfield at Ohio State. That backfield Six. is crowded. But yeah. well, let me tell you, that's a good thing. You know, there's so much competition there. Urban Meyer was saying, you can't believe how hard these guys practice because they know there's another guy to take their place. Six deep at running back. Guyton making time for himself and he fires to the near side and the pass is caught. Mitchell there with the reception. Another point that should be made in defense of Florida A&M, you know schools at that level, they only have 63 scholarships. Yep. Schools like Ohio State, they've got 85, so that's a big disadvantage. Dado Mitchell on the reception a sophomore from Cleveland Ohio five wide receivers here's Guyton Guyton looks downfield fires and the tight end reels it in Nick Vanette and Akil Blunt is there and 22 seconds remaining here the clock still running 48 nothing Guyton Screaming out the play. Guyton with time. Pump fakes now fires wide open. Touchdown for the Buckeyes. Evan Spencer. A 15-yard touchdown reception for Spencer. When you give a quarterback that much time, he's going to find someone. But when someone's that wide open, it's got to be a coverage bust by Florida AM. Second touchdown of the day for Spencer. You recruited his father, Tim. Yeah, Timmy Spencer was a great running back here at Ohio State. They went on to pro football. One of my favorite guys that I ever recruited or coached. Just a gentleman. Guyton with a new Buckeye record. Six touchdown passes. And look at the offensive line all over there. You see Braxton Miller. Will he be ready to go next week against the Wisconsin Badgers? Here's Kenny Guyton looking around, looking for a record. He's got it in Spencer, 55-0. Most first half points code since 1995 for the Buckeyes. That was against Iowa, 56 points. Spencer with his second touchdown this season. Kenny Guyton with a school record. Six touchdown passes and folks all here in the first half. He threw three touchdowns in the first six minutes of the game last week at Cal. Of course, he threw for four on the day. Led the Buckeyes offense to a three-year best 608 yards of offense. Most ever under an Urban Meyer Buckeye team, 608 today, 326. There is no foul for a kickoff out of bounds. The ball was touched by the receiving team. First down. Three seconds remaining here in the first half. We mentioned that when talking to athletic director Dean Smith, that originally it was Vanderbilt on the schedule, which led them to the Florida AM. Game when Vanderbilt backed out. They had to shuffle the 
lineup early on in the season. They went to Grambling first. Really wanted the bands here, and of course, unfortunately for uh, Florida A&M, the hazing incident there, the suspension of that band. They are now brought back, and unfortunate certainly for Florida A&M. Situation. 55, nothing. Offense number 55. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Do you think of the dilemma that Gene Smith, the athletic director, had? Vanderbilt bows out late and they've got to find a home game. So that, you know, that cuts half the, the schools in the country out of it. You know, you got to find a home game and someone that's available and they might have to get out of the game because of a big payday. Yes, McBurse he is brought down. And That's the end the of the first half. First half Time comes out. to a close. 55 0. Ohio State putting up 55 points. It's the second of most in the FBS this season. Baylor had 56 first half points in a 70 13 victory over Buffalo on September 7th.
One of the great scenes in college football. What a tradition here from Ohio. Football on BTN is brought to you by Auto Owners Insurance. Protect what matters most with an Auto Owners Insurance independent agent. Find yours at AutoOwnersInsurance.com. And by John Deere. The off-road just got roomier. The new Gator XUV 825i S4. Now with seating for four. And by Dairy Queen. What you're watching is served up by DQ. The home of fan food, not fast food. Quite frankly, the score that you would expect here at halftime. The third-ranked Ohio State Buckeyes lead Florida A&M 55 to nothing in the first half. Kenny Guyton getting his second career start. Coach, six touchdowns through the air. That is a school record for the Buckeyes. Great half for Ohio State. And great half for Kenny Guyton. He picked up right where he left off last week against Cal and made it even better. All right, let's check out the first half highlights brought to you by Planners. Well, here's Kenny Guyton on his first touchdown throw to Jeff Hireman, the tight end. Then he's going to come back a little out and up, and he's going to find Evan Spencer. Good throw, good catch. Now they got Carlos Hyde in the action. A little shovel pass in the end zone. Devin Smith, the big play guy, fade around to the end zone to perfection. He's going to find a wide open. And Chris Fields, and now he's going to go back all the time in the world. He's going to find Evan Spencer again. Six touchdown. Kenny Guyton, 24 of 31. He does have an interception, 215 yards, six touchdowns, a Buckeye record. Let's send it to Lisa Byington. Lisa? You guys, I talked to both coaches and starting with Florida A&M's Earl Holmes. He basically was not happy with this team and, and how easy they were making it for Ohio State. In this first half, guys, the Buckeyes, six of their nine drives beginning in Florida A&M territory. As for Urban Meyer, he said he wanted a fast start. He got the fast start. I asked him, how do you keep this team's focus? He said, hey, these guys are fighting for spots. You watch how focused and the kind of fight they have in the second half. Second half underway. And I think that's one of the things when you talk to Urban Meyer about this program. We reference flag down. By rule, the ball is placed at the 35 yard line. Ohio State, first down. The depth at running back, he said, you know, there's some areas on this team where he wants to see more competitive this out of his team and certainly linebacking core is one of them he said Mike Vrabel's done a phenomenal job with the defensive line for the Ohio State Buckeyes he said yeah they're young but they're talented and they're coming on like gangbusters and you talked about his state background with Woody Hayes either you're getting better or you're getting worse you don't stay the same Cardale Jones out of Glendale High School in Cleveland, Ohio, went to Fort Union Military Academy. He is the quarterback, 6'5", 250 redshirt freshman. He is started by Official Bobby Jackson. For an injured Ohio State player. Player down for the Buckeyes. See Florida A&M and their training staff racing out. To help out, and it's true freshman James Clark, New Smyrna Beach, Florida, who is down as the Buckeyes lead 55 to nothing, just underway here in the third quarter. A true freshman being attended to, working on the left leg. As they attend to James Clark, let's take a look at the Quicken Loans QB comparison and dominated by Kenny Guyton, as you would expect. All fairness to Damian Fleming, we talked about the youth, the mismatch offensive line of Florida AM, and the defensive line that's really coming on for Ohio State. And he hasn't had much time. He's had a lot of pressure. They've never got their offense into sync. Uh, it's been a long half. It might be even a longer day for Damian Fleming. You see Kenny Guyton there with huge numbers. And, of course, Braxton Miller, the school record, 3,310 total yards a season ago. His completion rate for Braxton Miller down at 
point three percent and it's something that he must improve upon something that we talked to urban of Iyer about it he said look we need to get that thing up to around seventy percent spent a lot of time working on his mechanics during the summertime really feels that he's made tremendous strides in that category as they continue to work on the true freshman James Clark the Ohio State a Buckeye wide receiver with his head coach Urban Meyer there. True freshman James Clark. They take it off of the field here at Ohio Stadium from New Smyrna Beach Florida. This is what happened at the end of the play. You see the retro freshman Jones and then get rolled up on it. Things that Urban Meyer wants to see from his wide receiving core as a former wide receiver, wide receiver coach is you gotta block. You have to. It's a must. Ezekiel Elliott is the running back. Straight ahead. Bounces outside and Elliott into Rattler territory. Dead of Mark. With the stop, here is Jones. 6-5-250, coach. Well, it's really important that they have room in this game to get this young guy some playing experience because who knows if Braxton Miller will be back next week. He may have to be the backup, and when you're a backup, you're one play away from playing. Hand off once again to Elliott. Elliott. Pass the 40-yard line and a pickup of nine as Michael Ducree comes in on the stop. Well, we're getting a, a good look at Ezekiel Elliott, and you talk about a guy that hit the hole fast. You know, speed is what makes offense. It's, it's important in all defense, but speed in this spread offense is so important. Jones has a quarterback, starting quarterback at Cleveland Glenville was 24 and 3 he passed for 1689 yards and 22 touchdowns as a senior in 2011 for coach Ted Ginn and was named 13th division one all state by the AP and then he went to Fork Union well the program that Ted Ginn senior is built up there of course Ted Ginn junior played here for Ohio State and the number of players that are coming out of that program is just unbelievable. Straight up the middle, and Lovejoy is there on the stop. Elliott getting yards on the ground. He has three carries for 19 yards. As Michael Lovejoy, the sophomore from Pensacola, Florida, is on the scene. Urban Meyer. Talked to him about the identity. We mentioned how wants to be fast paced balance 250 on the ground 250 in the air but that defense not being tested today they'll be tested next week against Wisconsin that is for sure Jones coming the other way Jones trying to stay on his feet and he is wrapped up and brought down by Blunt along with Francis Mays. See, what a learning opportunity for this young quarterback. They had a third and short, and he took a bad play and rather making it as good as he could, he made it worse by reversing field and losing even more yards. It Miller. is fourth down and three now. They are three for three on fourth down. Guys entering this game 28th in the FBS in total offense, fourth in the Big Ten. Here's Jones. Jones looking for some help, picking up a block. Jones down at the 20 yard line as he is brought down by Kayshawn Butler. Pretty good run for a guy that's 6'5, 250 pounds. He goes back there. He's got all the time in the world. He's off and running. I thought he might dump the ball, but makes a nice move. Cuts back. Gets the first down. Locks the ball up. Good play. This is an offense that is second in the conference behind Wisconsin in rushing offense. In scoring offense, they are second only to Indiana. Indiana averaging right around 50. 
Ohio State entering this game 44.7 and a handoff getting outside is Elliott stretched out wrapped up and brought down Neil Cunningham Richard freshman there along with Akil Blunt getting the Ohio State Buckeyes have been an awfully good offensive team the last two years getting points in the red zone especially touchdowns it's a proud Rattler program they have produced NFL players and think about bullet Bob Hayes going back Ken Riley was there handoff Elliott bounces outside Elliott into the end zone for a touchdown the true freshman from St. Louis Missouri Ezekiel Elliott his first career touchdown for the Buckeyes. That put a smile on Urban Meyer's face. Why wouldn't it? Kyle Clinton. In for Drew Basil to kick. The extra point is good. 61 to nothing. Six foot, 218 pounds. True freshman, Elliott, bounces outside, sees the end zone. Touchdown, Buckeyes. Today at 3.30, you'll see either Penn State host Kent State, Nebraska, and South Dakota State or Maine at Northwestern this afternoon presented by John Deere on BTN to BTN to go go to btn.com slash game finder to find the game available in your region. Kenny Guyton is back in for the Ohio State Buckeyes and Buckeyes at their own 10 yard line. Elliott is a running back. Guyton back in and a handoff to Elliott and Elliott spinning and brought down at the 16 yard line. Are you surprised that he's brought back in or you think that maybe field position kind of dictated it for Urban Meyer there? I'm surprised that he's back in there. When you start talking about 62 to nothing, this game is well into control. Kenny Guyton has played well. Well, I thought you'd see Jones probably the rest of the way. Guyton looking over better than 100 and 3,000 fans here. Warren Ball is a redshirt freshman from right here in Columbus, Ohio. He is a running back. Guyton on a handoff. Ball, ball straight ahead, and Ball is going to pick up the first down stopped by William Helms. You know, Matt, you talked about the game getting out of control, and I can already see that Urban Meyer's doing what he can. He talked about tempo. He wanted fast tempo. They're slowing this game down. They are not going fast tempo. In fact, they're even huddling right now. They're going to try to milk as much time off the clock, probably run the ball, not exclusively run the ball. They're going to run the offense, but it's not going to be a full speed ahead attack now. Of course, you're on that 1970 national championship team, Coach, and you are brought back here by Woody Hayes in 1978 on an inside handoff. A great run by Ball for another first round before Pillow comes up and a pickup of 12 yards. And this is in the building. Woody's final thoughts. Yeah, this is one of the favorite things. Every time I come back or I go look at it, this was the chalkboard in the ROTC building after Woody wasn't coaching anymore, and he was working on another book. He was a great military historian. He was trying to draw a parallel between military history and Ohio State football. Elliott in the backfield. 1977, you're an assistant at Illinois, and of course you get the call from Woody Hayes to come back to Ohio State getting to the outside is Elliott. Elliott with room. Elliott at the 25-20. Elliott caught from behind inside the 10-yard line. Dornerville brings him down after a 57-yard run. I now can see what Urban Meyer says. The competition at running back 
They have no problems in practice. They have a lot of talent. These guys are fighting for reps. And the way you fight for reps in Urban Meyer's Ohio State program is you practice awful hard. Seven carries, 102 yards. 62 to nothing. Guyton, the quarterback, out of the shotgun. Elliott remains in the game. Here's Elliott, straight ahead, bounces outside. Elliott, his second touchdown of the game, and a flag is down. Well, I would guess it's holding. Holding. Offense, number 33. 10 yard penalty. It's still first down. Sixty two to nothing. There's a holding right there. Yeah, when you're a wide receiver blocking, you've got to stay square. Once your shoulders turn, there's nothing to keep you from that defender beating you upfield, and that's why you had a hold of him. Elliott on a handoff straight ahead. The other thing, too, nothing tricky out of the Ohio State Buckeyes. Everything is right between the tackles. Well, as we mentioned before a number of times, that's a, a Urban Meyer is a class guy. And he knows what it's like to be, not recently, but he knows what it's like to be on that other sideline when all of a sudden the game's out of control. And believe me, as a coach, you have a lot of compassion for guys in that situation. You have compassion for the other football players on the team. You never really want to embarrass another coach, another team. You got a lot of respect for your opponents. Second and goal, all 15 Ohio State places have have been on the ground. Handoff now getting outside. Here's Elliott. Elliott into the end zone. No flags. Elliott's second touchdown of the game. A 13-yard run. Ten carries, 121 yards. Ezekiel Elliott. Kyle Clinton comes on for the extra point out of Dublin, Ohio. And Earl Holmes knew that today was going to be a tough one for his Rattlers. 69 to nothing with 226 remaining in the third. Now check out this block by number 81 right there. Nick Bennett, the tight end from Westerville, Ohio. Look at that block. He took his man all the way to the end zone. Coach, in 1978, your first year as an assistant here, Woody Hayes, infamous for those coaches' meetings. <laughs> Uh, but I can tell you one thing, and George Chops here, he was the quarterback coach. He warned me before my first staff meeting. He said, Monday, you're going to have your first staff meeting. Woody always makes an example out of the new coach. So watch out. He's going to ask you a question. You'll have no idea for it. So get ready. Well, I studied that whole weekend. I studied my players, their courses, their phone numbers, their family, their girlfriends. I had cheat sheets. I had things written on my hand. I said, he's not going to get me. Went through the whole meeting, and at the end of the meeting, he started telling a story, and he stopped and looked at me, and he he said, that's just what happened at Mount Sarabachi. And he said, what happened at Mount Sarabachi? I said, I got no idea. He looked at George Chomp. He said, tell him. He says, that's where they raised the flag on Iwo Jima. He looked at me and said, don't you ever forget it. He got me. He certainly did as Patrick Aiken. Well, I there for a little bit. You thought you made it through the meeting without being called upon. Well, there's a lot of guys that thought they were smarter than Coach Hayes. Uh-uh. No, he probably saw my cheat sheets or saw me studying that weekend, and he figured, well, I'll get him on something. He got me. Mount Sarabachi. I, you know, so many times throughout the course of a week, we talk about Ohio State and your, your time here at Ohio State and working for the legendary Woody Hayes. And I can't tell you how many times you talked about the graveyard of coaches before Woody Hayes came here. Well, 
I wish I could tell you about my first team meeting as a freshman, but it's, uh, it was very memorable that I'll never forget that it had a great impact on my coaching life. Carson Royal is a new quarterback. McBurst trying to bounce it outside. And Corey Brown is there to corral him. All right, let's send it down to Lisa Byington. Lisa? Yeah, a quick update on quarterback Cardell Jones. He had a laceration of his throwing hand, so he went into the locker room. They're going to put in a couple stitches for him. Actually, Ohio State is not ruling out his return here for today, even with the stitches on his throwing hand, guys. And the reason why that you saw Kenny Guyton come back in, Jones, unfortunately, the laceration, it is second and 11. Carson Royal is the quarterback. Redshirt freshman from Jacksonville, Florida. Bice is a running back. Trying to get outside is Bice in his 69 to nothing game. Well, you know, you see the guys on the field right now, and they're getting a lot of playing time, which is great for morale. But you got to remember, let's go back. Urban Meyer was not happy with the performance of his defense in terms of missed tackles. And if you don't think that whole defense wasn't yep. coached hard, and they expect, he, they know the coaches expect to see the improvement, who's ever on the field, doesn't matter if you're a first-teamer, second-teamer, or a third-teamer. Rattlers one for nine on third down. Remember, no Adolphus Washington out for the second consecutive week. Wrapped up and brought down. Ferris has had an excellent game. He is there as Chase Ferris comes in and makes the stop along with Steve Miller. Now, Ferris with a sack on this day. One of the problems you have when you get in a game like this and you liberally substitute then all of a sudden you go into a kicking down right here and you got to get the right people on the field and one of those first or second team defensive players got to get back up and go again. You just don't substitute all the way down third and fourth teams in kicking game. Chris Fields is standing at the 40. Blanton. The kick. Spiraling. And taken at the 35. Fields looking for some room and it wrapped up and it brought down just shy of the 45-yard line. Tonight in primetime, we close out our night with the Big Ten SEC battle when the Hoosiers host Missouri. Coverage starts at 8 o'clock Eastern, presented by Buick on the BTN and BTN to go. Six seconds. Remaining here in the third, and the Hoosiers taking on a Missouri. That's tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern on BTN. And you see some of the storylines there. Offense, number one in points in the Big Ten. An inside handoff. Yeah, Kelvin Wilson, Kevin Wilson, the That's head the coach down in Indiana. Time They've out. got that Hoosier offense just humming this year. Jalen Marshall on the carry. And that's the end of the third. All Buckeyes here in Columbus, Ohio, as they tune up for next week. And the Wisconsin Badgers come to Ohio Stadium. Ezekiel Elliott, two rushing touchdowns on the day for the Buckeyes as they lead 69 0. 69 to nothing as we enter the fourth quarter. Here from Ohio Stadium, third ranked Buckeyes with the lead Guyton on a handoff to Ball straight ahead. Neil Cunningham comes in. Earlier in the week, Urban Meyer talking about, you know, Braxton Miller and Kenny Guyton. He was asked about, could you envision both of them playing at the same time? He said, you know, it's in the conversation right now. But one of the things he talked about, he said, if you can buy stock, buy stock in Kenny Guyton. And I think that had more to do with just who he is as an individual and a person. Well, you can tell that Urban Meyer's taking great pride in developing Kenny Guyton. That's a big part of coaching to see how guys change. He didn't get off to the right foot with Urban Meyer, and now he's one of his favorite players. Ball, Warren Ball turns it back up inside. The John Deere game-changing performance. You see the numbers. 
they have stuck to the ground here in the second half. It is fourth and short. And coming out to punt in this situation. And of course, on this day, this is their first punt. Cameron Johnston, the freshman. Terry Johnson is back for the Rattlers. End over end. Fair catch. At the 14 yard line, it is 69 to nothing. I could, you mentioned end over, end over end punt. I could tell by the drop. He wanted the ball to do that because he didn't want it to bounce through the end zone. He wanted to be down inside there. We were talking earlier in the week to Earl Holmes and he was speaking about his great relationship with Mike Vrabel, the defensive line coach of the Ohio State of Buckeyes. They played together in the NFL Pittsburgh. They sat next to one another in the meeting rooms, and he said during that time, yeah, this is funny. They said that they would go back and forth about all the great players from the Buckeyes and then the Rattlers. And he said it was just always great, and they formed a great bond, and of course, still friends to this day. In fact, Mike Vrabel helped him pick out his wife's wedding ring. <laughs> now that's a good friend, huh? That is a good well, friend. At least you have a lot of trust in Vrabel yeah, to do that. Absolutely. Maybe he knew that Vrabel, or maybe he thought Vrabel had better taste than he did. <laughs> he said, well, you know, I, I need a little bit of help along the way. And, Earl Holmes said it was great just to talk about the history of the Rattlers with Mike Vrabel. And he, he would throw out a player from Ohio State. He goes, I'd throw out a player from the Rattlers, go back and forth. And of course, Earl Holmes played in the NFL, as we mentioned, played with the Browns. And you see the Steeler connection. And they sat next to each other in the meetings. Yeah, when we brought up Mike Vrabel's name, you can tell the conversation lit up. There's a lot of respect between those two guys. And Mike Vrabel, great player here at Ohio State, great pro player. Now he's a great defensive line coach doing great things with these young players. No quarterback in the game. Amari Albert, the redshirt freshman, will take the direct snap and looking for the run. A little bit of wildcat here out of the Rattlers. Jamal Marcus comes in and makes a stop. Sophomore from Durham, North Carolina. There is a Steeler connection down in Tallahassee. Yeah, there is. You see all those guys there. They got a pro influence. Levon Kirkland, Ernie Mills, Akeel Blunt, the player. And you know, let's not forget one thing: the defensive coordinator for the Steelers, Dick LeBeau, Hall of Famer, was a great player here at Ohio State. Goes from Ohio State to pro football. He had. I forget how many interception was unbelievable. And how about that punt? As it rolls all the way down to the two yard line by Colby Blanton. A 78 yard punt. It is 69 nothing. Buckeyes. You see the MT on the back of the helmets of the Buckeyes that is in memory of Maria Tiberi who was the daughter of longtime Columbus sports broadcaster Dom Tiberi who's also a longtime friend and supporter of the university and athletic department Maria died in a car accident this past Tuesday Jones is back in at quarterback and Elliott straight through the middle yeah I I was absolutely shocked when I got that news. Dom has been a great fan, friend. He's, you know, been with WBNS 10 TV for over 30 years. And uh, besides being great at what he does, you talk about one of the truly great people that I know. Great family. What a tragic loss, losing a child. I know he's devastated our heart, our soul, prayer. Everything goes out for him. It's just very sad. There is a moment of silence before the start of this game, which we carried here on the Big Ten Network. Second and three now for 
the Buckeyes and Elliott getting to the outside Elliott and a flag is down as Helms is there. Well I think that's going to be a hold on the wide receiver. Holding yeah. offense number eight half the distance to the goal line second down. I can tell Jeff you that green. That's a slow developing play when you have a rolled up corner out there you better pack your lunch because that's an all day block and he got caught with his hands outside and tough duty but you got to yeah. get it done. Urban Meyer said number one objective is to win this game. Number two is to make sure everything is ready to go as we enter Big Ten play and of course the Badgers. And it's a tough one to gauge in a game like today, you know, from a defensive standpoint and then also from an offensive standpoint, you know they're going to be sharp. You know that Urban Meyer and his staff are going to look at specific things to improve upon. Six teams have gone undefeated here in program history. In uh, 1916, 1944, 1954, and 1968, 19, and then 2012. That's unbeaten and untied. And when you look at this Buckeye team, Coach, high expectations for them. Last year, 12 and 0. Can they get back to their course? You know, this year, circumstances different than a year ago. Well, I would say they can, but six times in the entire history of this storied program, and now you're talking about doing back-to-back. -back. I mean, that's tall order, but I think that's that's the bar that's been set internally and externally about this Ohio State football team. And, you know, the thing about it, they're going to have to shift gears real quick, especially defensively, because that defense of Ohio State has been going against a spread offense. You think about the offenses that they faced all this year, and then all of a sudden, here come the Badgers. They're not a spread offense. 69 nothing. As the clock continues to roll. Elliott 141 yards, a true freshman with a career mark. Two touchdowns here today, and they stay on the ground as you would expect. Elliott runs through one rattler now at the 30, up to the 35, and take it down at the 39. They have not thrown the football one time in the second half. Well, that doesn't surprise me. You know, obviously, if you throw the football and you catch it and it's not a first down, the clock keeps going if it doesn't go out of bounds. But, you know, if it's incomplete, the clock stops. And Urban Meyer is going to do everything in his control to try to keep this game without being an absolute landslide worse than it is. But he can't call his players off. They've got to play hard. So call it dive play. You guys play hard. Or tomorrow in the film meeting, you're going to catch it from him. Warren Ball is the running back. And a handoff to Ball. Ball is going to grind out a couple. You see Urban Meyer with the button MT. And there you see the win streaks to begin a tenure. Larry Coker. And the University of Miami and Terry Bowden. Wait, 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 hold on a second now. We got to cross that out, make that a, a 16. I'll go as far on the limb to say that. How's that? <laughs> Absolu absolutely. And that's over the course of the last 20 years. We talked about the bond and connection with Earl Holmes and Mike Rabel. There is a connection between Ohio State as well as uh, Florida A&M that goes back in time. Yeah, Rudy Hubbard, who was a great player here at Ohio State under Coach Hayes. Getting to the outside. And now tripped up is Jones. And Jones with a first down. Well, I started talking about uh, Rudy Hubbard, great player under Coach Hayes. And then he decided to go into coaching. And that was before, I think, the term graduate assistants came along. Coach put him on the staff as a cadet coach. And then he did such a good job there that uh, he was elevated to a full-time coach. And he was here when I was here. He's just a great guy and a great coach. And then he he left one story program to go to another, uh, going uh, replacing Jay Gaither down at Florida A&M University. Won a national championship down there. Great player, great person, great Ohio Stater. Rudy Hubbard was an assistant coach for six years here including the 68 national championship team and you mentioned Jake Gaither as well yep. and uh, the Ohio State ties there yeah exactly exactly right and, you know you the uh, 
the first coach, uh, I think his name was Big Bill, Big Bill Bell, who won the first national championship down at Florida A&M, was an Ohio State graduate. Let's send it down to Lisa Bynes and Lisa. Yeah, I got a chance to talk to Rudy Hubbard here on the sideline. And the athletic director there at Florida a m was one of his players, and he actually invited him to be a guest to ride the charter plane with Florida a m up here to Columbus. And he said it's just a mix of emotions. Obviously, has ties here on both sides. But to be a part of the 73 team again, he said, I just, I cannot put it into words how much it means. The athletic director, Michael Hill, a graduate from Glenville High School in Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, the connections just keep going and going and going, don't they? And, you know, you go back and you talk about Archie, Archie Griffith, and you, you think of Rudy Hubbard. The story has it. Rudy wanted to play Archie, you know, and that's when freshman Elsewhere and Coach Hayes used to have a saying for every sophomore you played, you lost the game. He wasn't going to play any freshman. Well, Rudy finally got his way. Archie got in the field against North Carolina, went for over 200 yards, and the rest is history. 27 plays here in the half for Ohio State, all on the ground. Jones gives it to Ball. Ball looking outside, now cuts it back up inside. Ball grinding it out, and the clock continues to roll here in this 69 to nothing game as Blunt and Helms are there. You look at the Big Ten, and this is something that I think you're going to see more and more of them moving away from games against FCF schools and even MAC schools as well as you look out into the, the future scheduling, not only for Ohio State, but as well as other Big Ten schools. Jim Delaney, the athletic director of the Big Ten, has just done a phenomenal job, has talked about that and, and said he's highly encouraging teams not to schedule teams that aren't really legitimate matchups and uh, you know you'll you'll see some uh, people that will still do it I think scheduling is a difficult task at best but Jim Delaney the, the, I, I said AD I meant to say commissioner I guess the commissioner is a little more important than the AD huh? <laughs> commissioner of the Big Ten who's it done a phenomenal job and uh, you know he's he's been a not just even a trend center in the Big Ten, but nationally. And, you know, with what's happening with the Big Ten network and everything, you look at it here, high State, they got a big one coming up here against Wisconsin, the Badgers, and then up at Evanston against Northwestern that's got a real good football team. Iowa's getting better. Penn State's got a great quarterback. Purdue's got a new coach. It all starts next week. And we can't wait for it. Devontae Butler running the football. First and ten. Eight different rushers here today. Butler carrying the ball. Now you talk to Ohio State coaches and you would expect it with an opponent like this. Hey, this is about ourself. Ourselves as Jones keeps it trying to get outside. He's going to lose some yards. Neil Cunningham comes in to make the stop. If you looked at this team and you start thinking about, okay, this is us. This is who we are. You came out, got off to the start that you wanted to get. You did exactly what you wanted to do if there's still maybe a test out there they're going to find out next week specifically with their defense they lost seven starters from a year ago Mike Vrabel's done a great job with the defensive line remember they don't have Adolphus Washington but Joey Bosa the true freshman from Fort Lauderdale Florida has been outstanding for them and an opportunity here to get a lot of people reps to the outside and brought down at the 10 yard line is Warren Ball. Ezekiel Elliott, what a day for the true freshman from St. Louis, Missouri. 162 yards. And Urban Meyer be the first one to say, hey, this just didn't happen. This guy has been working hard. They are all competing for reps in practice. Today's Duluth trading hardest working player. And the clock continues to roll with 128 remaining here. 
But next week, make sure you keep an eye on number 97 defensively, Joey Bosa. Getting to the outside is Jones, and he'll scoot right into the end zone for a touchdown. Ten yard run. All Buckeyes all day long. 75 to nothing. They have not thrown the football here in the second half. When you evaluate what they've done here today, obviously defensively, they played well. They tackled well. They were awful good in the kicking game. They were dynamic on offense, with the exception of one interception in the end zone. 76 to nothing. Football on BTN is brought to you by State Farm. For auto home life and banking, get to a better state. Seventy six to nothing with one fifteen to go Chevrolet scoring drive ten minutes fifteen seconds in the second half thirty three carries for two hundred seventy seven yards Buckeyes have not thrown the ball since the first half Kyle Clinton to kick it off Ohio State seventy six points are tied for six months in a single game in school history it's the most the Buckeyes have scored in the game since posting an 83 21 victory over Iowa back on October 28th 1950. Patrick Aiken's going to take it Aiken up at the 20 trying to get outside and no place to go and brought down there Buckeyes 76 to nothing here at home. Braxton Miller, will he be ready to go next week? And talking to Urban Meyer, said, you know, the MCL grade one, two sprain. He said if he was an offensive lineman, he'd be able to come back sooner, but it's going side to side, the cutting, not the north and south, it's the east west. But one more week, will he be ready to go? The Heisman hopeful finished fifth last year in the voting. Such a dynamic force offensively for this Buckeye team. He's a premier player for this Ohio State team, a premier player for any team, but they pushed him hard in practice this week, but Urban was hopeful he could play him, but he said, you know, if he's not ready to go, he's not ready to go. On the ground, they'll keep it. With McBurse. Last week, 608 yards of total offense, and today for the Buckeyes, 603. A huge day on the ground for Ezekiel Elliott. Two rushing touchdowns for Elliott, and of course, Guyton, a record six touchdown passes. Folks, all that in the first half. A 16 game winning streak, the longest in FBS, and of course, Urban Meyer is a perfect. 16 and 0 as a head coach of the Ohio State Buckeyes. There's the handshake, and Earl Holmes been around football long enough. He knows that he was overmatched, and he's not facing a coach that purposely ran up a score. And Earl will regroup, move on, and Urban Meyer will regroup and get ready for a Big Ten play. Ohio State. With a perfect record of 4-0 this season, 3-0 at home. And of course, next week, the defending Big Ten champion Wisconsin Badgers are on the schedule for the Buckeyes. And the big question, will Braxton Miller be back? We saw the return of Carlos Hyde today. Let's send it down to Lisa Byington. Well, Coach, your backup quarterback is now 2-0 as a starter and threw for six touchdowns. What did you like about Kenny Gutton's decision-making, in particular, in the red zone in the first half? Uh, he's one of the best game managers I've had. You know, he does a good job managing the game. Uh, very efficient passer, you can see. And he's really improved because uh, a year ago, he wasn't. He, he's a much improved player than he was a year ago. On the other side of the ball, your defense didn't even let them cross midfield. 
field and shut them out. What was most impressive about your defense today? Well, we played a lot of guys today. We're, we're still dealing with two. Uh, we're two down in the defense line, but you know what? We overmatch this group uh, on the offensive and defense line, and our challenge come out and play and play as hard as you possibly can, and, and they did. I, I really liked their effort. The end of the non-conference season is here. You have Wisconsin around the corner. What do you feel this football team is like right now? How do you define this football team? We'll find out here in a minute because it's real. Next, it's real on uh, the Big Ten conferences, and that's our goal. And it's right around the corner now. Thank you. Thanks. It certainly is, and of course, the Wisconsin Badgers. They will find out. Find out in seven days as the Badgers will be here. The Ohio State Buckeyes, third ranked in the land with a 76 to nothing win over Florida A&M. This has been an exclusive presentation of the Big Ten Network. For the coach, Glenn Mason and Lisa Byington, I'm Matt Devlin saying so long, everyone, from Columbus, Ohio. Let's go now back to our Chicago studios and join Dave Remsen, Rever.